survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with a promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com. Now, malaria is, of course, transmitted by mosquitoes. Uh, I brought some here just so you could uh, experience this. We'll let, let those roam around the uh, auditorium a little bit. There. There's no reason only poor people should have, have the experience. Uh, that was Bill Gates laughing about how he plans to use mosquitoes to force Medicaid against malaria. With horrible side effects accompanying voluntary vaccinations, I, for one, want to be in control of the needle, whether it comes from a pharmacist or a mosquito's face. In a world where taking too much cough syrup can send you to the hospital, can't taking too many vaccinations do the same thing? That's exactly what Nazi scientists were hoping for during World War II. They wanted to use mosquitoes as bioweapons to poison their opposition, a dream that was fulfilled when they switched out the mosquitoes for ticks on Plum Island. Years ago, the U.S. government brought Nazi mines to the states under Operation Paperclip to carry out various scientific functions. On Plum Island, Eric Traub experimented with ticks as bioweapons. In the 1970s, Lyme, Connecticut had an outbreak of what is now known as Lyme disease. There have been other strange occurrences that many speculate are related to the work done on Plum Island. So go ahead, opt out of vaccinating your child. Bill Gates and Eric Traub have the medicine. You can find more reports at InfoWars.com. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit madein1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with a promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Well, yet another banker has died under mysterious circumstances. It'll be the seventh in just under a month. So do these mysterious banker deaths point to a looming financial crisis or something more sinister, like a methodical silencing of anyone who could potentially blow the whistle on financial fraud. 
Well, today I'm going to be speaking with Doug Hagman of the Hagman and Hagman Radio Show. He's a 30-year multi-state licensed private investigator, and you can read his articles on HomelandSecurityUS.com. And today I'm going to be speaking with him about his most recent article, Exposing What Lies Beneath the Bodies of Dead Bankers and What Lies Ahead for Us. Thank you for joining us, Doug. Thank you for having me. So can you just sort of recap some of these banker deaths and tie in how they're all related? Uh, not a problem. What we've seen here of late, beginning in the well, the first part of the year, is it began with the disappearance of a reporter working for the Wall Street Journal at the Dow Jones desk. Hmm. And now, now this gentleman has is, went out for a walk on a Saturday. He's he disappeared without a trace. They still have not found him yet. Of course, he's a, a recipient of a liver trans, transplant and is in need of medication. Uh, his family has had no contact. So this gentleman has been missing for over a month. And then we move right into uh, a number of, of people who are interrelated in the financial industry. You've got Tim Dickinson, the UK-based uh, communications director at Swiss REAG. You've got William Brokesmith. You've got uh, Carl Slim, uh, Gabriel McGee, and others, all of whom are related to or have some associated with these various large central banks. It seems to focus, or at least the epicenter of all this, appears to be J.P. Morgan. Mm. Now, in my okay, now in my investigation, what I found out uh, a couple of things. If we go back in time, for example, if we go back into 1974. Uh, one of the first, perhaps one of the first more modern suicides, if you will, is that of uh, 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 Luis uh, uh, Boyer, who happened to be an informant who gave some information about the gold, the commodities, but the gold specifically in Fort Knox. And, of course, she uh, was later identified as the informant of, of a story about the missing gold in Fort Knox. She come to find out was a secretary to Nelson Rockefeller on July 3rd, 1974. She allegedly leapt to her death from a ten, from the 10th story uh, high rise in New York City. So looking back here 40 years ago, you're looking at a similar situation as we're seeing today. Now today, you've got this litany of missing bank or the suicided bankers now. Uh, and, I, and I use suicide as a verb intentionally. But from my investigation, what we're seeing is this interrelation of all of these people who have, uh, who have allegedly committed suicide or have met their untimely demise. And the, there are a few common denominators here, one of which is, of course, the commodities market. Another, of course, is their placement within the financial system. And the, and the third aspect, and I think this is a very important aspect, is the, the current state of surveillance that's in, in, in play here, that's being used by the very banks that are under investigation for numerous frauds, including but not limited to commodities trading or commodities frauds. Um, these banks are actually conducting surveillance in tandem with, if people can believe this, in tandem with the NYPD and, of course, our intelligence agencies both here and abroad, and that includes the CIA here, as well as the MI5 and MI6 in the UK. And what we're seeing is a very efficient use of surveillance that not only identifies, I call them problem children, in terms of potential leakers or actual leakers or whistleblowers, um, and, and, and of course, it, it being able to silence them and make it look, for example, as a suicide or at least an unresolved death. You've got one death here, of course, that, uh, that people are aware of where one gentleman had reportedly committed suicide at his own hand by shooting himself several times in the uh, head, neck, and torso with a nail gun. Now, 30 years as an investigator, I've, I've conducted many investigations about suspicious deaths. I've seen some pretty odd deaths, but nothing to the extent to that extent. So it seems to be becoming more blatant. What we're seeing is becoming much more blatant than we've ever seen before. So that tells me as an investigator, based on my experience, that we're looking at something, um, we're, we're looking at a, a cleanup operation. My sources are telling me it's a cleanup operation. My sources are telling me there will be more. And I'm on record as saying, as, uh, as recently as last Friday and again on, on yesterday, 
uh, during my radio program that there will be more and we can expect more of these kind of deaths. So this is what we're looking at in the larger sense. Right, and historically, you know, during the Great Depression, we have, we've heard of banker suicides. But here, it seems to be more of a methodical silencing of people with inside information, right, who could expose fraud, financial fraud. A lot of financial fraud scandals are out in the open now. <laughs> exactly, and, and I, I understand people's um, interest in comparing the the suicide or the uh, uh, depression, the suicides that took place then with today. I understand that mentality to do so. I think it's an entirely different paradigm. I think it's an entirely different matter. Whereas before, they were committing suicide uh, suicides for the most part based on the losses that they either incurred or caused others to incur. Today, this is a preemptive tactic by the big banks. This is what my investigation, uh, this is what I conclude based on the information I'm getting from my sources, and I certainly would stand by that via my investigation. So would, would you say that there, this isn't a looming financial crisis, it's not an indicator of that, but it's more so a silencing of potential whistleblowers? Well, uh, you know what? I think it's both, and and I think that's a very interesting uh, uh, perception. Uh, I think it's both. I think that this is indicative that we're we're reaching the end of the line with respect to the fraud, with with respect to the being able to cover this up. These are very blatant interrelated suicides, deaths, disappearances. Um, so this portends something in the. I would say in the future. Now, I don't know when, you know, whether it's a week, a month, a year, but I, I do th look at this as a cleanup operation that uh, uh, they're, they're attempting to silence, in my view, they're attempting to silence these people. They're attempting to, wh whether these, these individuals stumbled upon information or had information, whether they were known to be a problem or discovered recently to be a problem, but I do believe that this is part and parcel to a larger agenda. And that agenda is to kill the U.S. dollar to establish a one-world economic system. They've got to do this, and they've got to get the United States out of the way. And, and, and the other thing is, too, they've got to get the, the, uh, the people, the whistleblowers, out of the way. So I think that this is a multifaceted situation that we're looking at. There's not one, one easy, simple explanation. You've got to look at this from different perspectives, and there I think you'll find the um, that we're facing, in my view, we're facing uh, a major financial reset. It's on a global scale. This is all about uh, covering their bases. Uh, you, you see, they're on a time, they're on a time schedule. And to them, when they, when, when they, and I'm talking about the power brokers, want to bring down the economy, they want to do it on their schedule. They don't want to be exposed or do it on someone else's schedule. So this is part and parcel to that larger agenda. Right, and it's very interesting what we, we're seeing a lot on the news now. They're really pushing about how vulnerable our infrastructure is and the grid and how vulnerable we are to a cyber attack. And it's interesting how you point out that, that J.P. Morgan and banks are backing this huge surveillance system that's in place not only backing it uh which you're correct but they are uh through our taxpayer money through in america here through our taxpayer money at 55 broadway jp morgan other big banks they've got this this huge um uh row of computer monitors that are staffed by jp morgan chase and other financial institutions security operatives so what we're looking at is not only is the are the police or, or the intelligence services conducting surveillance of every square inch of Wall Street, of Lower Manhattan, in the city of London, but their intelligence agencies, their, or the banks, are are actually doing so as well. So there's a there's an unprecedented level of cooperation and interaction. Well, it is precedented. Or there is precedent there if you look back in uh, Germany with respect to. Uh, Nazi, you know, pre-Nazi Germany with respect to the, the surveillance, uh, of course, without this type of technology. All right. Well, it's interesting. You'd think they'd, with all of that surveillance, they'd be able to give a little bit more information into the disappearance of the Dow Jones reporter. Well, now, the Dow Jones reporter did disappear in New Jersey. He went mm -hmm. for a walk on a Saturday afternoon uh, and, and did not return. So that's a little bit different. There were no 
that would didn't take place in uh, in downtown Manhattan. But that's a very interesting case in and of itself. And I, we, of course, offer our prayers for the family members and uh, the families of, of all these victims and, of course, the missing uh, uh, Wall Street Journal reporter as well. But, um, you know, it, it certainly is interesting. The timing is is well beyond.